and there is a delay here a bit so I'll give you a chance sometimes it's, it can be up to a minute or so so I'll give us a few minutes a, a, a minute or two for any questions that may pop up should be over here on the right hand side of your screen if you roll your mouse over there you should be able to uh, ask a question again we're trying out some new we're trying out some new integration and technology here so bear with me okay so far so good so we have no questions on contactors so we're going to move forward then and we're going to go probably another 15 minutes and stop probably right after contactors see if there's any questions we have a, i'm thinking we're going to have a, probably six parts to the schematic schematics class so there's no again there's no need to rush all right, let's move forward. Here's another uh, example of the uh, de-energized and energized contactor. So let's look at this again. Here is the uh, contactor coil. It's de-energized, meaning that there's no power applied to the coil. The contact number three is normally closed. One or two are normally open. When we apply power to the coil, three now is open and one and two close all right again de-energize is how it is on the schematic diagram and then when you're doing your troubleshooting you need to measure voltage and see if you have power here and then mentally open and close these switches because it doesn't happen but it doesn't happen for you on the schematic again here is another diagram so let's look at this this is a little bit better representation. So right now the thermostat is open. This circuit is at rest. So there's no power applied to the fan relay. And remember that I told you there's the, the little zigzag symbol right there. Fan relay, no power applied. So there's our normally open contact. So that switches the power to the fan motor. So right now the fan motor's not on, it's off. And there's our normally closed contact and the light is on. So this is at rest. So then the thermostat closes. It makes this circuit. And we apply power to the fan relay right here. The schematic diagram doesn't change, but the physically the circuit does. This normally open contact closes, the fan motor is running, and then the normally closed contact opens. So that looks like this mentally that's what you have to do and the fan off light goes out can you see that and again this is a pretty simple schematic diagram of a contactor and i'm going to show you where it really gets confusing and we'll probably go over this a couple dozen more times before we get through with this and we're going to talk about some of these other switches that control things here in a bit probably in the next lesson. Okay, so this is a contactor and this is a schematic diagram. And this is what makes them difficult in the field and when you're dealing with not the textbook schematics, but with real schematics. And, and this is why the contactor physically is one complete piece of uh, one complete part here. But when you look at it on the schematic diagram, and and again, we're gonna we'll look at this in a little bit more detail later. We'll we'll break this down later, but let's just look at the contactor. So here's our contactor coil here on the schematic diagram, which is the two wires coming in right here the magnetic part of it. This part of the contactor is up here and normally open on the schematic diagram. This is a straight through bus bar on the contactor. And it is here on the schematic diagram. So while you're looking at the equipment and this contactor and it's all 
one complete piece of physically on the schematic diagram, it's, it's scattered about in three different places. And if it's a relay that has more than one set of contacts on it, it could be scattered in four or five different places on that, on that diagram. So you really need to, especially with the contactors, understand that the coil diagram and, and the symbol for the coil is always, not, I wouldn't say always, but 99% of the time physically separated on the schematic diagram from the contacts. And a lot of times those contacts as well are just about as far apart as they can be here on the schematic diagram. Okay, do you see that? That's what makes them difficult. And then the other thing that makes them difficult is you've got to switch those switches in your in your mind when you have power applied to the coil of the thermostat and you have 24 volts applied here and the the magnetic coil energizes then it closes that switch and energizes the compressor all right